Sriracha mayo. It's been done. Sriracha ketchup. That's a thing. Sriracha socks? Dude, I literally have a pair at home. Uh, sriracha yogurt. <laughs> Chobani did that in like 2013, dude. You gotta be kidding me. This, this is, is a hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> what? <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show where we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaiti. <laughs> and today, Nicole, we are taking on a massive ecological and economic question right here. Correct. We are talking about, is sriracha overrated? And Nicole, the reason this has an ecological and economic impact is because we are going through an unprecedented time right now. These are unprecedented times. These are There's not a single precedent for no, these times. No, never, never. There is a massive sriracha shortage that the entire world is dealing with. Bottles are selling for hundreds of dollars on eBay. People Crazy. are going to black market sources, I assume, Crazy. and they're getting their bottles filled up. They're just bringing empty bottles and some guy in a back alley is just going <laughs> and sucking it out siphoning of the factory, it siphoning it, it factory. spitting it into the bottles. <laughs> uh, that's not true at all, but, but there is a massive sriracha shortage right now, that's and so true, we is. are going to go through the question of like, should people even care? Is it yeah. overrated is it, all along? Is it warranting a shortage is what you're asking? Is it warranting a shortage? Okay, fair. Um, but Let's first, see. we should we should get into why the shortage is happening. I think we should get into what sriracha is. Okay, yeah. Go, back to, the is Go not, back to the beginning. Sriracha is not just a hot sauce. It's a now, way of life. Well, hold on. Are you talking about... <laughs> When you say sriracha, do you mean the rooster sauce? You're talking about Hoi Fung foods. Well, of course, that's my first inclination. That's like my first, my synapse, my synapses tell me. Yeah, you like, uh, yeah, like in a clockwork orange, you hear sriracha and yeah, you start my, seeing the images of the rooster in your mind. My eyes are open like this. Maggie's putting eye drops in there. <laughs> and it's it's flashes of, of rooster sauce. Yeah, I'm seeing like the $10 t-shirts at Target with the sriracha <laughs> yeah. logo on it. It's iconic. It's it's the, it's the lime green tip and the super red orange orange mm -hmm, bottle mm -hmm. you know that's iconic but i know that sriracha isn't like just that it is more than that it is an all-encompassing sauce right it, it is but in a really weird roundabout way hmm, okay right? so a lot of people might think that sriracha is a brand name it is not there's no copyright on the word sriracha now that's one of the questions i have as a person like from someone who like does not own an LLC as someone who like doesn't like do anything like financially or <laughs> honestly intelligently most of the time why didn't the person who made like the the rooster sauce that we know and love why mm. didn't they trademark sriracha um a couple reasons so they've asked David Tran is the founder of Hoi Fong Foods yes. which makes the most popular sriracha in the world and people have asked him about it and he was like well I didn't want to gatekeep anything I wanted people to oh. I wanted to spread the gospel of so sriracha potentially potentially okay. potentially um so in that's, that aspect he was he was moral that's what he said <laughs> okay but it may have just been that he didn't really know you had to do that and then it was kind of too late because he oh. has since trademarked He's trademarked the logo and he signs licensing deals, but also several of these licensing deals. So, for instance, mm -hmm. there's a microbrewery that makes a sriracha stout that if you've had it. Oh, I, fun. I, I, just, I don't need spicy beer. You yeah, know what I, I mean? drink beer to quell the spice. Correct, Amundo. <laughs> um, it's a cool product and it's actually a really beautiful bottle. It has a green bottle cap on it. Oh, cute. Um, okay. But there is sriracha popcorn, sriracha flavored chips. Sure. And so if they want to use the logo, then he licenses it to them, but he also isn't charging them. Just the logo, not the name. Uh, because the name isn't trademarked sure. still. Sure, okay, okay. But, so, but the logo is, so if they want to use that, they would have to pay him, but he doesn't even take money from them. Oh. He views it as free advertising. And that's another <gasps> potential reason to not trademark smart. something that's pretty is smart. the fact that Heinz makes sriracha ketchup Lee Kum Kee makes sriracha mayo mm -hmm. uh, McDonald's was putting sriracha on, on their burgers, burgers. <laughs> and I, I gotta say I, I enjoy McDonald's but their sriracha was really not poopy. great it was, it was poopy. poopy it was like really creamy and very very yeah, sweet didn't really um, enjoy so it. part of it is really worked out in his favor the okay. fact that everyone wanted to make sriracha made his sriracha even more popular. That's cool. Um, okay. But then came what he himself in an interview called uh, the rooster killer, which is Tabasco. Tabasco started making their own sriracha, which... Oh my God, it's so good. Have you had it? You like it? I literally hoarded in my house. I have like four no bottles way. at home of the Tabasco sriracha. It is 
so delicious. My husband literally asked me specifically before. He's like, don't buy any other sriracha. That's the sriracha I love. That's incredible. So yeah. I, I have this theory. Um, one, Tabasco is just, it's owned by, what is it? Is it McElhenney? It's a family, McElhenney? right? McElhenney? Mac- McInerney? It, it's, yeah, but McElhenney. it's... McElhenney. It's um, distributed by massive brands. It's been around for about 100 years. Yeah, it's um, iconic in its own right. Tabasco pepper sauce. 100%. Yeah, so yeah. they have a massive marketing budget, massive legal budget, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and so David Tran is now getting freaked out by Tabasco getting in the market yeah, that really he was good. like, I maybe should have trademarked something. Uh, I think it's still going pretty well for him. But with the shortage, you're opening it up to a lot of these competitors out there. And now everyone has a sriracha, right? Lee Kum Kee, I think, makes the best um, sriracha substitute for Hoi Fong. I think they're the closest. You think so? Okay, okay. Trader Joe's has the one with the dragon on it. Mm-hmm. Texas Pete's makes their own. I believe Yellowbird makes their own. Yes, they do. And so now there's a bunch of competitors blue coming agave. in. Blue agave. It's a blue agave sriracha. That's my biggest problem with all the sriracha competitors because I've been out there with the sriracha shortage buying up the competition because yeah, I won it. Sure. And I literally two days ago just ran out of my big ass bottle in my fridge. Mm-hmm. But they're all too sweet. And I think it's because... So many people in America conflate East Asian food with sweetness. A hint of sweetness. Yeah, yeah. sure. And I, sriracha I think that's does normal. have sugar in it. Hoi Fong sriracha does. Definitely. Um, but it's not like a sweet sauce. It's very intensely chili yeah, flavored. Yeah. I would say sambal olek, the one that's also in the bottle with the green top. Which is, yeah, made by the same company. Yeah, I'd say that is sweeter. Maybe. Am I wrong? It, no, there's definitely sugar. There's definitely yeah, yeah. sugar in it. That's more sugary. Um, but that's a really interesting... So, yeah, we should get into the history of sriracha sure, because sure. the Sambal Olek that the same company makes is kind of the same relationship to David Tran, the founder. I kind of like it more sometimes. <laughs> and it, same, same. I absolutely love it. The yeah, chili yeah. garlic sauce as well, which mm-hmm. is really similar. Uh, but so sriracha is a town in Thailand. It's about 120 kilometers southeast, uh-huh. I'm so bad, directions of Bangkok. Okay, uh, It's a cool. seaside town, kind of like a surf town. Um, oh, and there is <laughs> literally just one woman. Um, her name is Tanom Chakapak. That's who right. Who started yep. making uh, what she was calling sriracha, sriracha panich. Panic. Yeah, I see it. Hot yeah. sauce. And her recipe was incredibly, incredibly specific. Um, uh-huh. It was made with only fresh goat peppers. Goat. Goat. I had like never Kobe even, Bryant goat. Like Kobe Bryant goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had never even heard of a goat pepper. I've never heard of the goat. I've heard of the ghost pepper. Same. I literally thought it was yeah. a mistranslation. And then I, I had to Google it. It's a cousin of the scotch bonnet or the habanero. Oh, okay. So, you know, round, bulbous, very bright, very fruity. Fruity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fruity intensely for sure. spicy. Yeah. When you think of Thailand, you generally think of what we would just call a Thai chili pepper or a bird's eye bird's pepper. Eye. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So small, nuclear, very heavily seeded. Um, the flavor isn't that like sunny, light, bright, almost a grassier flavor. Are, are goat peppers specifically in sriracha or is it just so, like a Thai pepper that's like sprinkled? So there was, there was no such – sriracha hot sauce was not a thing. Like it was literally invented by one family. It was one family's recipe. It wasn't. It wasn't ch- ch- chaka pak. Well, so it was chaka okay, pak. But okay. I'm saying like it wasn't. You know, um, not everybody uh, had sriracha. Aioli, right? Aioli, you yeah. can trace back to like recipes a thousand sure. years ago, yada yada, yeah. um, and all that. That wasn't the case with sriracha panich hot sauce. It was one family who was like, I want to make something new today. Oh. And it was actually uh, Chakapak, uh, her grandfather, I believe, started like tinkering with it. Shut up. It's cool as hell. And they would just give it to friends and families. They start selling it. And then Chakapak herself, mm-hmm. um, she started to bottle it at the behest of friends. They were just like, yo, you got to get gotta this You got to give me a out. bottle. You got to give real. me this stuff, man. It's delicious. Yeah. And so that was in like the, the late 40s, I believe. And then it just sort of grew and grew. And then she sold to a big Thai distributor. Mm. And then now it's the most popular uh, sriracha sauce in Thailand. And they've floated the idea of bottling in America and getting okay. distro rights. Um, but in comes David Tran. And he's like, no, no, no. He, who had just, I suppose, visited sriracha and was like, hey, I like this. Um, but he was making hot sauce in his own style in South Vietnam, okay. where he was from. So he's ethnically Chinese in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, after uh, uh, the Vietnam War and there was a lot of anti- um, Chinese sentiment, sentiment. in mm-hmm. Vietnam. Mm-hmm. There's sure. Sino, uh, the Sino-Vietnamese War. Uh, and so he leaves as a refugee and his boat is called... Sriracha! Hoi Fong. Oh, Close. <laughs> the name of his company. And so he uh, settles in Boston, okay. has a brother-in-law in Los Angeles, and he literally calls him and according to his legend, at least, he just goes, hey, yo, they got chili peppers in LA? And he's like, yeah. yeah. And he's like... <laughs> Bet I'm going to be there soon. Oh, nice. And okay. so he was making this hot sauce um, inspired by the sriracha hot sauce of Chakapak. 
And then he gets to L.A. and finds an abundance of Mexican chili peppers. Wow. So he okay. starts using red jalapenos. Brilliant. And a very similar method. So the ingredients are basically jalapeno, garlic, vinegar, sugar. sugar. That's kind of it. So it's not, you know, American vinegar-based hot sauces like Tabasco are just sugar, vinegar, chili peppers. Water. In, in water. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, no water. No water in what? There's no water in Tabasco. There's no vinegar. water in Tabasco? It's vinegar, chilies, and salt. Shut up. Which is why it's so acidic, right? It's like, why is it so watery? But it's vinegar. And they strain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, it so it's, it's that and then it's strained, but sriracha is like unstrained. So there's a lot of chili pulp in pulp, it. Pulpy. There's sugar in it. So you get like a lacto-fermentation. You get the yep. sweetness. There's garlic in it. So you get that extra aromatic flavor. Mm -hmm. So it's still very simple, but it's like a new dimension of taste that a lot of Americans hadn't had before mm -hmm. and also it's very different from the thai version yeah it's also really funky have you ever noticed Super like funky. like eating sriracha on its own like on a spoon it is so funky and deep it's like abrasive too it's, it's there's strong. it's a bracing yeah. flavor yes it is you know uh and so they actually npr did this incredible story where they mm -hmm. sent a reporter with a bottle of hoi fong sriracha which at the time was not really in thailand at all and this okay. is after the company had sense. really blown up. It became a cultural phenomenon, right? Yeah, it was like bacon. It was like bacon, yeah. yeah. You had them, they were making sriracha rub bacon, you know what I mean? Um, and so it became this cultural phenomenon, and they bring back the sriracha hot sauce from Hoi Fong Foods to Sriracha the town. Okay. And they start like giving it to locals, being like, hey, so this is really big in America. And they're like, what? I've never heard of this. Oh, and so my So they start gosh. giving it to locals, and at least in this story, every single person they interviewed was just like, this sucks. <gasps> No and, way. And they asked him why. And they were like, um, I guess there's this Thai term that I'd never heard before called clom clom, which okay. like it what does doesn't that mean? have a direct translation, but it kind of just means like everything is in balance. You have balanced your Thai food is one of my favorite cuisines because in the entire it's world. So balanced. It's so it's balanced, but everything is ramped up. Sure. So you yeah. it's, it tends to be very high acid. Yeah. You think of a papaya salad, right? Sure. Yeah. High acid, high spice. A lot of sweetness, a lot of umami. Firing and funk. on all cylinders, yeah. Everything is firing. Yeah. And when it coalesces into the perfect bite, there is nothing like it in the world. Sure. And that is called clum clum. Mm. And they're like, Sriracha doesn't have that. They're like, this is, it's bitter, it's cloying, it's not balanced. And they're like, Sriracha Panich, the OG, that's, clum, all that's clum clum for days, baby. Huh. You know? And so when you talk about like, is Sriracha overrated? You know, you actually think about the flavor and you're like, is this the best thing? Or is it a thing that you and I grew up with and became a cultural phenomenon? So part of the hysteria. Suit? You know, yeah, we're part of, are we just part of the mass hysteria? I mean, I do think sriracha is delicious, but am I just saying that just to say it? I don't know. Your eyes, when we said Tabasco sriracha, which like we mentioned, it is a lot sweeter it's than good. sriracha. Yeah, it's good. And if it's, you know, I think. There's no clum clum. There's no clum clum. No clum clum. <laughs> no, no. Like it's not, you know what I mean? But do you think that there are better brands out there than Hoi Fong and that you're buying Hoi Fong for the label, for the nostalgia that you have for the bottle? Well, the only reason I buy sriracha is because um, I live with someone that can't eat food without chili peppers all over it. I have watched your husband at like a, a, a Jewish high holiday dinner just go, <laughs> ma! Hot sauce. <laughs> and he's literally taking like, you know, traditional Persian Jewish dishes and just like yeah. dumping he, uh, Red Rooster on he it. He can't eat food without hot sauce. So Welcome to LA, baby. I always <laughs> have lifestyle. so I always have like different kinds of hot sauces in bulk. Mm. Also, I love hot sauce myself. I always have it on on lock. But what did you ask me? I'm sorry, I got distracted oh, like, because you, you ruined like this <laughs> on kebab, and I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> no, I'm saying, do you think that Pound for pound, the green bottle cap rooster sauce, Hoi Fong Food Sriracha, actually tastes better than these others. Like in a blind taste test. Oh, well, in a blind, I, you know, you know, I will say that I've gone ever since there has been a sriracha mm. shortage, I have bought about five different kinds of sriracha. Yeah. And the taste of sriracha is iconic and distinct. I will say that. 100%. The Hoi Fong, unmistakable. The Hoi Fong one, you can taste it out of like mm. a lineup. But is it the best one? I don't know. I think I think it has a lot to do with the visual. I think when you open up your fridge and you see that green tip 
Mm -hmm. it's it's just you're like everything is right with the world because you have your Stratra bottle 100 and you have it next to your tabasco it and you looks have, right in your looks, fridge exactly i, I think, keep it next to the milk exactly like that's what i'm saying yeah. like of course it is it the best hot sauce in the world probably not is mm -hmm. it is it delicious yeah but is it the most important thing no but is it visually pleasing absolutely 100 like when i open it and i see i'm like okay everything's fine like you know yeah what yeah, I mean? yeah same it's, they, it's comforting it's it's this crazy that green tip is such insane marketing and it was it was deliberate it yeah. was like green connotes freshness it's going to be a heavy color pop against our like bright red hot sauce yeah. made with the red the jalapeno peppers yeah yeah i have a surprise for you what should i show you i would surprise love to right show now? me your surprise you want me to cover my eyes no 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 it's okay you can okay keep no open. show me no you can show me <laughs> no, eyes are covered no, no, no. you can no, you, you can open your eyes okay it's i thought not you here were yet. gonna have it in no, front no. Of you. so uh <laughs> So, you know, on eBay, how they're reselling Stratch bottles for what, like a hundred dollars, yeah, yeah, fifty dollars. So, I found something in my mother in law's pantry. You found a hundred dollar bill and you're gonna buy Sriracha with it. No, get the heck out of here. I found an, an unsealed, <laughs> I'm opening it up, an unsealed <laughs> Sriracha bottle, Hoi Fong. Now, here's the kicker when do you think this expired? I do you I can think it tell expired? that this is expired by the way it looks. Okay, when do you think it expired? 2021. No. When? One more guess. Uh, 2018? I don't no, know. No, no, no. December 2022. So it's not the oldest it's thing in the world. Fresh. It's aged. It's barely aged. It's a little bit aged. It's pantry aged from your stepmom. <laughs> not stepmom. Mother-in-law. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, 329. Now, if you oh want my to... God. listen, Listen, David has an eBay store. Golly. What we can do is we can sell this and we can go 50-50 on it. Maggie, I'll give you like, I don't know, 20%. And what? And we can go 50-50 on it. We can sell this. The fact that it's aged might also make the price go up like a bottle of wine. I think it will. Do you I think it will. It's a vintage. It but no, but at this point, like we got to sit on it for 20, 25 years. You know what, what I mean? We got to we gotta really sit. It's just going to go up in value. It's like a baseball card. You ever hear those stories? It's like somebody sold a baseball card for $10,000 in yeah. 1990. Now it's worth $9 million. Ha, ha. I don't know how money works. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can. So this is like super dark. It looks super oxidized. But also, this is the thing I didn't realize. Sriracha, generally, it's never food dyed. It's never color corrected like that. Okay. And so earlier in the season... Uh -huh. uh, sriracha that was bottled will actually look different than late season sriracha. Shut up. Be darker late season. So maybe this is just a late harvest sriracha. A late harvest sriracha? <laughs> I didn't know. It is approximately six months expired, but who hasn't had a yeah. little bit of expired hot sauce in their fridge? I agree entirely. I have it often. I agree entirely. Well, let's see. Um, Chili, sugar, salt, garlic, acetic acid, potassium, excuse me, sorbate, sodium, bisulfate, as preserved as xanthan gum. Love it. I think there's something really inspiring about Hoi Fong sriracha and David Tran's journey in the sense that it is a knockoff of a knockoff of something from Thailand that the locals there actually hate. Literally hate it. <laughs> and that I don't even know if it culinarily is like the best sauce. However, I have become so accustomed to the unique taste of Hoi Fong Sriracha mm -hmm. Me too. that anything else doesn't taste right. When you get mm -hmm. pho, right? Like I'm not a person who squirts sriracha into the broth or Me whatever. Either. My favorite my thing spoon. to do <laughs> is I, I take the, the hoisin and the sriracha and I put it in a little dish and I put them next to each other. And then I take my meat and I take it out of the pho with the broth still on it and I dab it in both uh -huh. and then I slurp up the meat. Okay. And that's an important part of it, right? Sometimes if I want to feel something, I'll just dip, you know, a chopstick in a sriracha and do them. Sure, sure. And, I do and, that too. And any other brand, it does not taste right in that context. I think it's because everyone makes it so corn syrupy. Agree, just, I agree. It's just unenjoyable to eat on its own. But sriracha. But they got like, <laughs> they just got such a cultural stranglehold. It's ridiculous. You know, sort of kind of plagiarizing the work of others, but also creating a unique product with yeah. local ingredients, right? So we got to get into the shortage and why it's happening. Yeah. Um, so Sriracha, it exploded so, so, so much. Their factory is in Irwindale, California, which Represent. the only time I've been to Irwindale, it's probably like 60 miles, e maybe like 40 miles east of Burbank. Okay. The only time I've been to Irwindale is because they have a speedway there. And for my dad's like 60th birthday, a speed, do you like race a racetrack, cars? a racetrack. Oh, okay. For my dad's 60th birthday, we got him this like experience where he could like drive a turbocharged Camaro around That's the racetrack. Cute. And that holy crap. A good dad thing. He was loving do. it. And the funny, this is just a fun little aside about how my dad was. So there was another group of young-ish kids, like my brother and me's age, who also bought their boomer dad the same experience okay, for his cute, birthday. Cute. So it was just boomer dad v boomer dad. And what they did is you start on opposite ends of the track. 
and you're just supposed to like go around like this, mm-hmm. right? And you're never, you're not supposed to race each other because that's dangerous. Okay. But they're trying to double up on the amount of people they can get on a track Fair. at one time. Okay, okay. Um, the other boomer dad was driving too slow. And so my dad said, screw it. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a drop the hammer on him. And everyone is yelling at my dad, like, don't pass him. You're not allowed to do that. And my dad is like, Woo, we're coming through, baby. He was from Pennsylvania. He doesn't have a Southern accent. Were you in the car with him? No, we were like, my brother and I were like watching with the other boomer dad's kids, just being like boomer dads. So I'm like, boomer dads. Are those lifelong friends now? No, they're not. Sorry. I think they were actually kind of mad at our dad for passing their dad and emasculating mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. Point is that racetrack is a couple miles from the Sriracha factory. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. And the Sriracha factory was literally, it it had grown so large against all odds because it was a small business that the fumes of the chilies were literally poisoning the town and they had to like sue as a whole thing. So like Aaron Brockovich, like Aaron, Bro- just like Aaron, Brockovich. just like Aaron Brockovich <laughs> or the, um, the Matt Damon movie with, uh, John Krasinski. No, you know, this one, it was called like promise about. land or something. Dumb. I don't know what you're talking about. It was about. all fracking. And I didn't know anything about it. I don't it. know what you're talking Anywho, about. Anywho. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so you basically get the small company that has this massive operation now uh-huh. and now things are getting a little wonky. So they they're had poisoning the town. They were poisoning the town because they just never expected to be that big. Um, and so their suppliers now mm-hmm. they use red jalapeno chilies, right? Mm-hmm. And so they initially were using a farm in California called uh, Underwood, which I've gone strawberry. We've picking gone strawberry there. picking there. Not we. I. Oh, well, I've been separately from you. We yeah, didn't go together. We don't go together. <laughs> I also picked like cucumbers and basil. Yeah, I've it was gone. Fun. I used to. I've been for my birthday, and I actually. Side note: You had a little anecdote about birthdays. <laughs> so do I. I got all of my friends on a party bus, got them absolutely hammered, and made them <laughs> work in the field in like ninety-five degree heat, and God. we picked strawberries, and it was really really fun. So that's their like PR arm, right? Uh huh. Uh oh, how do they poison the town? Oh. That's a great question, Maggie. So it was just fumes. It was fumes. literally Maggie. You know when Pepper we cook. Fumes. You know when we cook in here and we cook with spicy food. Yeah. And there's all the chili pepper fumes that you don't like. It makes you cough. It makes you cough, right? Yeah, Imagine yeah, yeah. if you were just sitting in your home and you had an asthmatic child, and the fumes wouldn't stop. Hate that. Hate that. That's what was happening in Irwindale. Um, but so Underwood Farms was their supplier, actually Underwood Wild. Ranches. Okay. But I think where we went is called Underwood Family Farms, which oh. is their like PR. That's like their, you know, client facing oh, production, right? Well, I love that place and I want to go again. I loved it too. I had a great time. Um, I, I got a beat from there. Um, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, Underwood was supplying all their chilies, and then they had some sort of legal dispute. I believe Hoi Fong had to pay a $23 million settlement, and they cut ties. They're like, we can get cheaper, more abundant chilies from Mexico, because that's where jalapenos are from originally, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Mexico basically suffered this super drought, and so there were shorter growing seasons and Mm. all this. Uh, And so Hoi Fong hasn't... They've been a little cagey about why exactly... It's happening. All they're saying is they have supplier issues. Some people are, are saying it is because of the drought and because of climate change and wonky growing seasons. <gasps> oh, oh. However, oh. however, when you ask any other major hot sauce brand, not even major, minor in- included, they're all just like, we've had no difficulties whatsoever. Have you asked any? I haven't reached out to them oh, myself. They've been yourself. quoted in okay. articles. There's a New York Times article where they were talking to like Yellow Bird. They were talking to Tabasco uses red jalapenos as well. Um, and everybody seems to be able to get their product out just fine. Mm -hmm. So I get the sense that Hoi Fong is just going through some weird wonky corporate stuff where they tried to switch suppliers. Sounds like it. it. And then if one supplier drops and they can't immediately find another one that they just can't keep up, which is... Why didn't they just like uh, breadcrumb them, you know, just like, like give 10% to them give 20% the next season, 30%, and that's what I would have done as a, as a person who does not have an LLC. Hoi Fong Foods, bring on <laughs> Nicole Anayati as your official consultant. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter. <laughs> but that's kind of what a lot of people have been saying, that like they just kind of messed up their supply lines and because they have always been sort of a smaller company, that they didn't have you know the resources um, to actually get there, which well, is why you see these companies selling out to big distributors. Sure, it's because like you have access, yeah. And Unilever and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But do you think it's overrated? <sighs> Shoot. Do you? It's rated very high. It's rate. No, my official answer is no. There is right. The taste is so subjective, right? And hot sauce specifically to me mm-hmm. is such a subjective food Mm. and it's also like americans have a very unique relationship to hot sauce 
hot ones, for example, I don't think would have worked in France. You know what I mean? There's like, there's so many different small batch hot sauces that make things so unique and so different Mm -hmm. that I think if you were to blind taste test me with any hot sauce, I think my palate would be very, very confused. I think hot sauce is very, it's a very branding forward. It is all branding. It's like books. Ass Blaster 2000, you know? (laughs) Like Like, I always judge books by their covers before I read them. (laughs) You you are literally defying the metaphor. You literally judge books by their covers? Yeah, I'm literally a walking, talking, anti-metaphor. That's incredible. I guess I do the same thing with hot sauce Yeah, of then. course we do. Have you ever been to the hot sauce store in the Grove, the mall? Yeah. That's one of my favorite places. I, it's world. great. I, there's a hot sauce store on the Jersey uh, Ocean City boardwalk that yeah. I, I love going to every time I'm out there with Jules. I'm going to go there in like a week or two. It's going to be really lovely. Everybody come find me there. You're going to buy an <laughs> Ass Blaster 5000 hot sauce? I probably am. I bought a delicious Calypso sauce oh, from yum. them last time. Yum, yum, yum. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, I, it's it's so tough to call Sriracha overrated because I think it's such a nostalgic taste for me. And mm-hmm. I would never want to subject it to a blind taste test. And even if I did... I would know that this was Hoi Fung Sriracha. 100%. And I would still be biased. And there's nothing wrong with that. All f- You are biased in all foods, right? Of course foods are we not are. Foods in are a vacuum. Not, they shouldn't be in a vacuum. Yeah. But no, I don't think... I think calling it overrated is unfair. I mean, it's obviously not overrated. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at look at the hysteria of people selling it on eBay for so much money. 100%. I mean, people are hoarding it in their homes. People are buying knockoffs, trying to get that same feeling yeah, and that They're same trying to buy rush. a knockoff of a knockoff, knockoff of, of a knockoff, knockoff. Trying to feel that same delicious flavor and they just can't get it you're like almost there i know what's that thing called where you're almost there and then you're not a phantom limb itch oh, i was gonna say edging oh edging talk about yeah it? you can talk about edging. it's like, like it's like it's like this it's people <laughs> i don't know if i'm allowed to <laughs> Now you're making it weird. The fact that sriracha is so the fact that hoi fong food sriracha is so iconic there's no way it can be overrated there's no way in hell yeah, it's it's it's, it's almost like a self fulfilling prophecy. Exactly, it's un American to think <laughs> sriracha is overrated. Kind of. It's created. I mean, it's expanded a lot of people's culinary horizons. Hundred I mean, percent. I mean, there's a lot of people who I know that were like anti hot sauce. They're like, I can't stomach the stuff. Uh, I don't like it on anything, and mm. they now are sriracha fans because it's palatable for the American. Person. It looks like ketchup. That's another thing. I think that's a. I think that's Is a that huge it? key to its success. Oh, interesting. For the American audience, it looks and it squirts like ketchup. Hmm. There was a great quote. It, that, that was weird. I feel like Megan didn't agree with that one. And that's fine. Megan doesn't have to agree with everything I say. But there was a great uh, interview with a Vietnamese <laughs> chef in the New York Times. And she used the phrase that I thought was hilarious. Just hmm. sriracha is like ketchup for Americans. And I was like, ketchup is like ketchup for Americans. But the fact that we've literally switched... Right, salsa for the first time. This is a huge cultural moment in the this U.S. Is true, yeah, yeah. Outsold ketchup in 1993, I think. That's so. For wild. the first time ever in grocery stores, right? Showing the changing American palate, and I think Hoi Fung Sriracha is a massive part in that story. I agree as well. Opening up people to different regional tastes, even though this isn't like particularly an established regional taste yeah. anywhere throughout Asia. It's not. It's a uniquely American product. It's a very, you know, it's a shibboleth of the American dream. I haven't heard the word shibboleth in like eight years. Yeah, man. I use it wrong all the time and I use it wrong right now. And that's OK. OK, I that's like why it. I was like, it's misplaced. It's a good example of, of like the, the American dream, right? Dude yes. comes with a kind of knockoff idea. He has an incredible story. Refugee from Vietnam. Yeah. You know, creates a knockoff of a knockoff, poisons a town, makes millions of dollars, kind of screws up, doesn't trademark anything, but it you know is incredibly successful anyways. Um, and now we can buy Sriracha socks and Urban Outfitters. And that's America, baby. I will link my husband's eBay store and you will see this and we'll sign it and we'll sell it. Maybe not sign it. Real quick, I want to get into something though. What are what are what? sriracha alternatives? Like what are other regional hot sauces that you think people might not know about that you would recommend to them? Oh, I already said sambal. Oh, like, that's Sa- mine. So sambal is like Indonesian, right? I don't know. Sambal is a term for, it's a blanket term for a lot of different Indonesian That's true. hot sauces. That's true. What's, uh, Dave and brought us one that was a lemongrass chili there one. There was a lemongrass that and shallot sambal that knocked my freaking my socks my life. Off. It Maggie, was like, can you look it up? It was like my first two weeks of working here or something. And David was showing me like kindness. And he's like, <laughs> try this sambal. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And it was one of the most delicious things I've ever had. Yeah. Check out, try and find different sambals. Heck, I mean, if you're open to ordering on Amazon, just go on Amazon and find stuff. Yeah. There's another one called um, ketchup sambal. Ketchup is a Hokkien word, by the way. It's 
kind of a, a East Asian slang term. So ketchup means soy sauce in, I believe, Indonesian. Um, but anyways, it's like a very sweet soy one. Uh, Calypso sauce from from the Caribbean. Sure. We have a couple of Trinidadian versions. Matuk's Calypso That's sauce. That's the jam. It's one of the best things I have ever had. What's the, uh, there's like a spicy shrimp paste that I really like. Is it is it the Thai one? Is it the one that we have in our fridge right now? I think so. Or what yeah. is the, there's also like a stinky tofu that's like spicy. Yeah, spicy stinky tofu is really good too. That's a fun time. Not for the faint of heart. <laughs> that's a fun time. Yeah, uh, gochujang of course, Korean oh. uh, fermented chili paste. I think gochujang is kind of uh, overrated. Used, I, think, <gasps> I think it's used incorrectly by the masses, the and that pisses me off. Don't put gochujang, gochujang and mayonnaise. I think tastes really bad oh, together. I don't God, understand why no. people do it, but you mix gochujang with just like vinegar. Um, and a little bit of water, a little bit of water, sugar, uh huh, and then better. you like glaze meats in that or yeah. anything. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. There's a wide world of hot sauce out there. Yeah, you Go just seek gotta it out. find it. You just gotta find <laughs> it. Josh, how would you prepare Hawaiian-style shredded chicken over pineapple coconut rice? Well, I guess you start by braising the chicken thighs, right? That's going to take a couple hours while that's going. God, you're going to want to soak the rice. You're going to want to wash it. You got to ah, bring a pot. And I'm going to stop you right there. Because how many people really have time for that once fall comes around and we're no longer in summer mode? Oh, I know where you're going with this one, Nicole. Because that dish is one of the many delicious options you can get with Factor. America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit with chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals that are ready in just two minutes. And these aren't your typical frozen meals. In fact, Factor is fresh and never frozen. I'm a big fan of their pesto salmon and the fact that there are over 34 meals and more than 45 add-ons. That gives me so much to explore week in and week out. Oh, and I love the Protein Plus options with 30 grams or more in every serving. So head over to factormeals.com slash hotdog50 and use code hotdog50 to get 50% off. That's code hotdog50 at factormeals.com slash hotdog50 to get 50% off. There's more than one kind of sriracha. Spork Stored in Myrick tastes 21 different sriracha brands and ranks the eight best ones. Yeah, just search sriracha on Spork to find the full ranking. And here's the URL. <laughs> HTTPS colon backslash backslash spork dot com slash article slash best dash sriracha slash. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Nicole. We've heard what you and I have to say. Now it's time to find out what other wacky ideas are rattling out there in the universe. It's time for a segment we call Opinions Are Like, like Casserole. All right, y'all, before we get into your opinions, we're going to do the classic segment that everybody loves, Review the Review, where we take a review from, what is it, Apple Podcasts or something, and we review it. Go yeah. review us if you want to be featured on Review the Review. Do I do a dance for this one? Yeah, we're going to call it the all-male review, and you got to dance like Magic Mike. So Nicole's going to do that while I read this review from Deb's five stars titled Whoop Whoop Juggalo Nation Unite. Love, love, love this podcast. So fun, awesome topics. And I love you, Nicole and Josh. You rock. I definitely recommend for anyone who loves to laugh, listening to this always makes my day. Cold fruit tea, e.g. raspberry, is actually just juice. That's not true at all. Anyway, love you, Josh and Nicole. The raspberry tea is raspberry tea. Tea is an actual plant. I can't remember the scientific name for it, can but I it's a plant that is flavored like with raspberry. Magic you can Mike. stop dancing. You can stop dancing. Okay, thanks. Um, do we auction off the sriracha now? Yeah, we're going to do it. And I was at the bid for the sriracha, $100. Susie got $100 of the sriracha. You and the blue overalls over there got $100 of the sriracha. $125. Look for $125. Woman with a big yellow hat. You got $125. $150 sriracha. Sriracha, biggest hot sauce. $150. Sold. $125. The woman with a big hat. We're selling it on eBay. Oh. <laughs> well, that was really a nice. Woman in a big hat here that just said she paid $125 for it. That's the ghost of Mythical it. Kitchen. I wanted to say one more thing about sriracha. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do this. Sometimes I forget. And I and it's not that consequential or anything, but I just want to say it. Interesting thing, when you use a less hot pepper, right? So sriracha is made using jalapenos. Yeah. The OG is made using something similar to a habanero. When you use a less hot pepper, but you're still trying to get a very hot sauce, you end up getting more pepper pulp in there, which means more pepper flavor. Okay. And peppers tend to be bitter, right? Pepper skin. So I think that's accounting for the difference in taste. And I get why some people wouldn't want that. And I generally like the flavor of chilies. I like that bitterness. But I had something the other day that was made with even a milder pepper, a Romano pepper. Mm. It was an ajika, mm -hmm. which is an Armenian pepper paste and spread. Okay. And I tasted that and I was like, this is bordering on too bitter for my personal palate. Sometimes peppers can be bitter, yes. And so I understand why people might not like the sriracha. If you are used to a more nuclear chili pepper, 
being used in your sauce where you're getting a lot more heat and a lot less of that bitterness. Thank you for sharing. Not consequential at all. I'm Go glad, check out I'm Armenian glad you got your Ajika. Point and I believe they make Ajika elsewhere as well. <clears throat> okay, time our for our first opinion. Let's do it. Hey, Mythical Chef Nicole and Maggie. Uh, I have a recipe here that I think you're actually going to like. No, but it's Mythical Chef it. Nicole and oh, well. Maggie. Oh. Uh, so you're going to be taking a tortilla, flour, wheat, doesn't matter. And you're going to put peanut butter and strawberry jam all over that thing. Uh, what makes it a little bit better is switching that out for the strawberry goober spread. Oh, no. <laughs> That's good. I don't really care what anybody says. Ethically opposed. On top of the peanut butter and jam, you're going to be putting sweet chili Doritos yes. crushed up. Hell yes. Finally, you're just going to fold the tortilla over like a crunch wrap, <laughs> put it in a skillet, uh, seal both sides, and there you go. I don't know if that makes it an uncrustable or a different <laughs> type of crunch wrap, but it's delicious. It's got salty, sweet. It's amazing. Try it out. This is this is smart. So I was raised in a non-goober household, but I would always see the jars and I would think they were the most incredible culinary mm-hmm. invention ever. Yep. So I'm glad that you have goober. Did you ever actually try it though? I've never tried it. It's it, it it's bad. It's something about them being aromatized in the same environment oh, for so okay. long that I find bad. Got it. Okay. I, th- I okay. think it makes the jelly somehow makes okay. the peanut butter worse, and the peanut butter somehow makes the jelly worse. Mm-hmm. I think it has a net negative Fair. on both okay. products. Okay, I've never tried it, so I don't know. But I would never put this in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> never ever. <laughs> never ever. Why? I think you know why. What do you mean? No, but I mean like spicy sweet chili Doritos, I think they yeah. have enough. They're obviously modeled after a Thai palate. I doubt there's any actual like Thai ingredients in there, but you know, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's got a lot of MSG in it. No. And I think mixing that spicy and jelly goes well together. You've had a we ate a jalapeno strawberry jam in here together that we both enjoyed. I don't spicy remember and that. Peanut butter, <laughs> spicy and peanut butter obviously goes really well together with a lot of ground peanut based Thai dishes. I would just use classic tortilla chips. I don't know if I would do the Doritos. I think the texture of a Dorito makes it because it's a little bit lighter and a little bit crispier than your classic tortilla chip. No. You don't think so? No. You've maddened Nicole. You've incensed her. I think this is really brilliant and I would like to try it. I will say I feel like it it (laughs) might just be better on leavened bread than a tortilla. I like the tortilla angle. I keep a lot of flour tortillas in my house. You know that a lot more than leavened bread. And the other day, I really, I was about to work out. I wanted just like a lot of calories and carbs that I could go use as energy. And I wrapped uh, a thing that I've done very often, wrap a banana in honey and peanut butter in a tortilla and eat it. And it was like so deeply unpleasant. Oh, really? Did you it heat up It was just the something. It was like the tortilla. I, to I heat heated it up. Oh, you did heat it up. But then it. But then you're putting cold ingredients inside it, so it just gets kind of like mm. dense. And I found myself okay. like suffering through this. I'm sorry. Whereas if it was on leavened bread, I, it's one of my favorite treats in the entire world. I you bought I mean? some good bread the other day. What kind? From Bay Cities. Oh, like a filone or a like filone, sliced bread? A filone. Yeah, nice little, it's like an Italian baguette. Uh, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, what's yeah. that girl on TikTok? Uh, Pinky doll. Uh, Shout out to Pinky doll. Come on the show. Uh, I like when she yells at her kid in French. Uh, like, arrêtez, arrêtez, s'il vous plaît. She goes like that. this. Uh, uh, this is cream. the ice cream so, so good. Much. Yeah. Oh, ice cream so good? Ice cream, ice cream so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> keep going, keep going. The people are tipping um, you live, actually. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you. I love you so yeah, much. Yeah, gang gang. Cow- cowboy. Gang- got me feeling like a queen. Gang gang. Gang gang. There it is. Yeah, we, uh, we live in a dystopia. Oh, you got me feeling like a cowboy. You ever think about that? If somebody just novelized the Slay current ho. time with any Slay of this, ho. it'd be viewed as a, Slay quote, dystopian ho. novel, right? Slay ho. And then you start thinking, how can any gang dystopian gang. novel gang even gang. be considered dystopian gang when gang. we are currently living gang gang. In a dystopia. Gang, gang. I mean, we got hundreds of thousands of people living no, on the street like in one of the most prosperous girl. nations of all time. We have people just selling their time gang, and gang. attention, gang, gang. acting like a literal gang, gang. non-person. The idea is that she's acting like a non-person right now. That's the essence of dehumanization. Ice cream's so good. And I get it. People are like, she's out there paying her bills. And I'm like, yeah, but we shouldn't have a system in which she needs to pay her bills doing that thing, right? I think mean, there's dignity in all work, of course, but... Mm, ice cream's so good. <laughs> Next opinion. <laughs> Hi, this is Mike. Uh, I live in Michigan, home of Coney Dogs, Detroit-style pizza, and nothing else significant from a culinary standpoint. Um, 
So my opinion is more the opinion of someone I know, namely my brother-in-law. And he is a big fan of sardine and banana sandwiches. Hell yeah. And, you know, the first time can get grosser. I told him about this, or he told me about this, um, I told him that it sounded like something that a football player who had one too many concussions might eat. <laughs> Uh, however, his wife oh, then uh, came into his defense the and said that she thought that Indians. it really wasn't all that weird. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn here. You know, I, I, I'm curious to see what y'all think of this. Uh, thanks so much. Love the pod. Love you guys. Everything you do is awesome. You're wonderful. Oh man, oh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy nice. is a very serious disease, and I hope we can figure out how to negate it uh, in football because I will Just not stop watching this. Stop sport. playing football. <laughs> yeah, but I want to keep watching it because I really love it. Flag, I started to think about this; it's one of the only things I look flag forward football, to. Flag football, flag football. It's not nearly as fun. Okay. Um, I have an answer for this. Please eat it with sriracha. <laughs> <laughs> the sriracha will make it better. Am I wrong? No, I agree with that. I actually think the fishiness and and the neutral sweet yeah. could be really good if you married it with some sriracha. <laughs> sriracha has a causticness to it. It has a caustic taste. You're caustic. I am caustic. <laughs> I Several people do not enjoy my company. But I um, do. Thank you. I think you're great. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's something, it's, it's very grating. It's abrasive. We talked about that. And I think that marries the sweetness, that marries... And he, it bridges any gap I that agree. is so far apart because it's just like, oh, my God, kind of like bitter, unpleasant, incredibly spicy. Like, I know it's not like the spiciest bitter. hot sauce, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. quite spicy. Um, I think that would work. This sounds to me like somebody from a remote part of like Lapland. It sounds like a Laplander. Where's Lapland? Maggie, look up what Lapland actually is. Like uh, Scandinavia. It sounds like someone from like a remote part of Sweden. Who's just like my my mother made this all the time, and then mm. my grandmother made this. Finland. Yeah, Lapland is in Finland. Um, but like it, it sounds like something like a cultural mistranslation of how one is supposed to use bananas. Like the flying Johnny or whatever. What's that thing called? What, what's the flying Johnny? The, the the Swedish dish with the bananas. Oh yeah yeah yeah. What what's in it? Bananas. They, they, use, they use tropical fruits in a very strange yeah, way. Yeah 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 yeah. Uh, no, it's strange to me, strange to my palate, not strange to y'all, but uh, you know. A lot of people around the world laugh, laugh, laugh at it sometimes. You know, you, you put the you put the bananas on the pizza. You know, it's uh, it's weird. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say that. And so this sounds like that. Which again, I do not personally love banana pizza, nor do I think I would personally love this sandwich. Flying Jacob. Flying Jacob. What's in it? It is uh, chicken, cream, chili sauce, bananas, roasted peanuts, and bacon. Unreal. This Unreal. is all that sandwich is. Again, a lot of incredible uh, culinary traditions out of Scandinavia. Fish eggs in a tube. I love that. They did that? They have like so tubes smart. of fish row that you can just oh my on gosh. like a smorgasbord. I would like to brush my teeth with that. I agree with it. I agree entirely. Next, Unpinion. Hey, lovelies. Hey. Hi. This is Claire from Washington. Hi, Claire. Adore your stuff. The state. Adore Not so hot take. What? And I know I'm the preaching to the, the choir. or the district. Nobody thinks you're cool for your food taste. Ooh. If you drink your coffee plaque. Ooh. If you get your steak extra rare. Ooh. If you can handle super spicy food. Nobody thinks you're cool for that. And if you like all of those things, cool. This guy. Like them for liking them. It's not going to impress anybody, though. Mm -hmm. I do like all those things, though. Same. Same girl. We've been conditioned. Anyways, love you. Bye. We live in a society. Um, you know what? Something really interesting is about all three things she said. I was going to say toxic masculinity. Correct. Foods. No, a hundred percent. Right. And I think we frame a lot of, we, fr we frame masculine, good, feminine, bad, right? What? Mm, how, okay. I don't, this. I don't personally, what I'm saying as like a society, society? right? That's something uh -huh. you go to a not, bar, not as much hear me anymore. out, hear me out, hear me out. Uh -huh. You go to a bar, you as a woman, me. Yes. Lady lady yeah order an old-fashioned uh-huh i as a man order a cosmo who is likely to get praised and who is likely to be made fun of um, for for subverting uh, the typical gender ideology i'm more likely to get crap for defying that gender norm but i think you'll get more attention 
I'll get more attention. Boy, do I feed off of attention. So, I also d- don't really enjoy Cosmos. Um, yeah, you're not a Cosmo you know, person. <laughs> not a Cosmo so guy. I'm not an old-fashioned um, lady. I get, you know, tiki drinks. <laughs> I'm not same. an old-fashioned But I'm saying lady. that you would be like, oh, my God, a girl can handle her whiskey. You know sure. what I mean? You okay, get that. Fair. Okay, yeah. Um, you're not like other girls. Yeah. And so I think so much of our food tastes are wrapped around that. But mm. I think we are now getting away from that into a point where we are more inclusive. And I love we realize it. there's no moral judgment. With a drink. Taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? What you eat, what you drink, it's neutral. It's merely a preference. Yeah, it's and fuel for your body. We're also in it. There was a tweet that went really viral of somebody saying, um, white people who go to an Indian restaurant and order butter chicken, garlic naan, and mango lassi has the same energy as the white people who go to a Mexican restaurant and get chips and salsa, enchiladas, and a margarita. And it was meant to be a dig. They were very that clear. That all sounds good. I know. And, and I mean, I... Sorry. I knew exactly where they were coming from, though, right? Yeah. I've suffered from the opposite, where I go to a Thai restaurant, and I'm like, what's the weirdest thing they have? <laughs> you know? I'm like, what? But like, what region is this? Is this from... This is from a region? Sure. You have a region? And I've had the opposite thing, which I would call the Bourdain effect. You know? I mm. want to be seen as unique. I want to be seen as interesting. You know what yeah. I mean? And oftentimes, I would... Uh, I would suffer, you know, I would rather eat something else, but I felt the need to get quote unquote the most interesting thing on the menu. Yeah. And it's not a personal value that I want to hold, but it's this, it's the same holdover for why I drink black coffee for why I eat hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah. FOMO. You're like, I'm never going to see this. Let's just say jungle curry again. I have to order it because this place gets oh, the jungle I do curry. love a jungle curry. I know you though. do. I know Ooh, that's not the, like the whole green peppercorns Yeah, in you there do love that. But, but yeah, um, I don't know. I I mean, if you put a cup of coffee, a black cup of coffee in front of me versus a cup of coffee with a little bit of almond milk and creamer, Mm -hmm. (laughs) caramel macchiato creamer, I'm going to find myself (laughs) drinking that one more so than the black one. It just tastes better. Just does taste better. Do you judge people for for their order? Say in a a coffee shop, right? There's how many old head white dude comedians... I've had a joke about like, when I used to get coffee, it was just called coffee. Now you got your caramel frappa, whatever. Sure. So many have jokes like that. Like, do you judge people for their coffee orders? Because uh, I still do. And I hate that about myself. No, not anymore. I'm I'm like, life's too, life's too serious to like care if someone got a macchiato. Like, I don't care. Like someone's food preferences don't bother me like that anymore. It's not worth it. Life is too, life is too... I don't know, not serious, but life is too beautiful and complex and busy and decision making that if Joe Schmo gets a macchiato, but it's not his typical macchiato he gets from Starbucks, it's like a smaller macchiato, like that doesn't define him as a person. It's a drink he's drinking. Starbucks doesn't actually serve macchiatos. Know, they use the same method a lot of the cappuccino and macchiato. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I blacked out. I don't like this part of me. I don't like this part of myself. I'm sorry. I'm say, I know, macchiato <laughs> means stain, right? Is that what it means? Macchiato or like oh, a, that makes sense. a stain of, of milk, whatever. But I don't know. I mean, I used to be that person. Yeah. But the older I've gotten, the less I care. And 100%. I'm just like, you eat what you want and you enjoy. If you like black coffee, mm. drink the black coffee. Maybe pour a little bit of creamer in it so you're not pooping your pants. Yeah. You know? You ain't got to poop your pants. Don't eat the steak rare if you don't like it. I agree. I, I think Medium. there's that wisdom of getting older where yeah. you realize that, oh, all these things that we cared about were these stupid gatekeeping ideals that so literally stupid. held us back as people seeking pleasure and comfort. Absolutely. Which is dumb. I did it with so picky dumb. eaters. I, I love cooking. Uh, Julia has a, a very picky friend. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people's food decisions, it does stem from things like anxiety and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But uh, I love cooking for her because they're like, I love cheese fries with bacon. Like, no other things on it. You know, don't want no green garnishes. If I see green, I'm going to throw up. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I'm like, I'm going to make the best freaking French fries you've ever had. The best, you know, I'm going to really do this up. And I love being able to bring joy to people who may like have those limitations, right? Yeah. Who aren't able to be in the quote unquote cool kids club who are eating the most Epicurean things. I think there being a cool kids club for food is dumb. Yeah. I'm over it. I think though we are headed and we're, we're going over time. I don't care. I don't I don't care. Wanna, <laughs> this is a great opinion. Um, I think we are heading in a very strange direction mm-hmm. where all the, think about all the new restaurants in LA right now, which I know we talk about a lot of local stuff, but LA is one of the markets that, it, it sets the tone for what a lot of other markets Absolutely. end up doing, right? You're welcome for Dave's hot chicken being in your hometown Thanks, soon. Thanks, Drake. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, we are, I think people's palates are getting simpler and simpler and simpler. 
That's which so I, I don't think is a bad thing, but I think it's limiting the creativity of chefs and limiting pushing culture forward in a certain way. Mm. So many new restaurants. It's it's red sauce Italian. It's French bistro. In LA, it's, it's a lot chicken, of red sauce Italian. It's pizza. You know, it's um. There's a great restaurant called Pizza Palace that's one of the most popular in LA, and they serve it's Indian owners and chefs. Yeah. But they serve quote unquote sports bar food. Yes. So all their food are Indian flavors, but it's all pasta, pizza, wings, wings. burgers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like very cool in one sense, but then in the other sense, it's like, man, are we all are we only pasta, pizza, wings, and burgers now? Is that all society wants to eat? I don't think so. I think part of it's a COVID thing. Part of it's a return to comfort hmm, in a way. Maybe. But I think there's also value in getting out of your comfort. You know, sure. there's value in um trying seeing, new things. You yeah. know, other things. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I know. Interesting topic. I could talk about that for a long time. Find me at a party four beers deep and I won't shut the hell up about that and then you will leave me. It happened recently. Sorry. Saturday. No, it was great. Who uh, was that's it? my ideal night. What? Who was it? Oh, it was just like a just a like a random, random person, person. Random person who just like somebody brought up something about like flour tortillas and I'm just like Ugh. I'm about to do... It's like when an X-Men with a new power is like, everybody's got to get out because I can't control it. That was like me. I was like, you might want to leave. <gasps> so in the early 1500s, the Spaniards settled the Northern Desert. <clears throat> Thanks so much for stopping by Mythical Kitchen and the Hot Dog is a Sandwich podcast, uh, a flagship production of Mythical Kitchen. Flag! We got new episodes of that podcast. The one that you just listened to right now, unless you are starting the video backwards and you're playing it backwards to hear the satanic messages... When you play it backwards, that's an obscure reference. Cranberry sauce. <laughs> if you know, you know. And if you want to be featured on Opinions Like Castrols, give us a <sighs> ring and leave a quick message at 833-DOGPOD1. So the new episodes, I didn't tell you, they come out on Wednesday, the audio versions. And then you got to wait all the way to Sunday. All the way to Sunday. All the way to Sunday. And then you're going to get See a video version. beautiful, shiny faces. But there's also, we drop new uh, Easter eggs in the video version. So you listen to the audio on, on Wednesday. And then on Sunday, you watch the video to try and find all the Easter eggs. And you got to watch the whole video. And also to find the Easter eggs, you have to comment, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. So there's no Easter eggs. It's just to trick them. Okay. It's just to trick because I'm not comfortable in our actual skills to hold an audience. So try, try and trick them. For more Mythical Kitchen, check out our other videos. We launch new episodes every week. We will see you next time. It's, it's the same way that we trick them with the thumbnails when we go, ah, so it looks like the most exciting thing ever, but it's really, we just made like a pasta. We made like spaghetti and we're like, ah, but it's like, it's just really spaghetti. You know, right. you don't go, ah, it's like, ah, if, 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 if we're being honest, it'd just be like spaghetti. spaghetti.